Hello everyone in Cyber World, welcome back to another video. I'm Richard. And I'm Jennifer, and this is our channel we call Poor Man's DIY. This week's video, we're going to make a special project for a friend of ours. Okay, so some of you may know that uh, we started a small business uh, online, uh, mostly through, through Facebook, where, where we're actually making some of these projects and selling them. We're, we're customizing uh, different things for people as they want them. Uh, a friend of ours uh, reached out and asked if we could make something for him, and we did. He seemed really pleased about it, and uh, he did something very special for us, and so we wanted to return the favor, and uh, so we're going to make something for him. Uh, now, in doing so, it's something we've never done before for in this particular thing. So it's a, it's a new product that we're going to be uh, making. Uh, and I'm gonna do kind of a step-by-step -step for the for a change. Usually we just show you what we do and we kind of give you ideas of, of how we go about doing it. But I'm gonna try and do, uh, as I say, a step-by-step -step explaining why we do certain things so that for those of you out there who want to try and duplicate this and, and uh, make things and, and possibly sell them for yourself, uh, you're welcome to do so. So let's get right into it. All right, as I mentioned, uh, we normally uh, kind of go through things really quickly uh, without giving any specifics as to why or, or, or not but uh, so this time we're going to do something a little different we're going to try and give you as much information as we can I won't give you specific measurements because whatever you're making it doesn't have to be the same thing but this is just so, to show you the concepts and of, of what you can do all right so to start off with we're going to be using 1 8 inch uh, wood um, the local big box stores don't have 1 8 inch except for a local Hawaiian uh, hardware store and uh, they only carry a mahogany which has proven to work out perfectly for us so we have uh, I pre-cut a whole bunch of sheets and here is what we're going to be using now we use this for just about every one of our projects that we use with our, our laser cutter um, some things look completely different and it's all about uh, the type of stain that you can put on here. So this one piece of uh, wood, uh, if we apply different stains at different different places, uh, um, when it comes out, it looks like we're using three different types of wood. Uh, and like I said, in reality, it's all the same thing. So um, we start off with this, and what we're going to be doing is we designed uh, uh, something here. And if you've seen the the uh, thumbnails, you probably already know um, we made a uh, project for for Steve. Um, and it was a Wonder Woman uh, plaque that we've done before uh, for some others and so this time we're gonna make something just for him and this one is going to be the Captain America shield and we're gonna go ahead and start with this we've already designed everything uh, on our computer and we're going to just give the instructions to print it out on our Xtool M1 Okay, now actually for selecting the wood that we're going to be using, we pre-cut everything, um, but you run into things such as this. But uh, this here on the plywood must have had some defects and it, fill, it was filled, it looks like some kind of a, a wood putty, wood glue or something, and then sanded over. It is sanded, but it clearly looks like a defect and so ideally we wouldn't want to use this particular piece and we would try and find something that's clean but this one too also has a defective area there so what you have to do when you're doing this is you just simply have to think okay what is it that I'm going to be using we're going to be cutting several circles some rings and whatnot out of this so you have to con consider well is this going to be where, where this is located is this going to uh, be in the ring itself or is it something that we're not even going to use so when, when we line up the image on here to cut, we take this into consideration and say, well, even though there is a flaw, we can actually move move the circles around so that we're gonna be cutting so that this does not affect the final result. I have also found that these things actually are pretty, pretty good as is if we were to put epoxy on it, you can clearly see this. When I put stain on this, um, all of a sudden, the, the defect is very difficult to tell. So we'll see how this one goes, but right now, based on what I'm seeing, from this piece here we're just going to move the whole shield and try and cut it over on this side as much as possible so that it won't touch the the uh, flaw here okay. 
Okay, now this video is not about how to use any software to create the, the image. We have some on that. We might go into details on how we design this specifically. Uh, we use more than just uh, Xtool software. We use more than Lightburn. Uh, we actually use some Photoshop type software as well. And um, again, we're not going to go into details on that, but we are going to show you what we cut out and how we assemble it and make this particular shield. Another thing I wanted to point out, um, we place the wood on a honeycomb. Uh, we have a previous uh, video on tips for using a laser and we explained why. Um, these, the M1 comes with these uh, uh, prisms here that you can actually lay the pieces on. Unfortunately, when you deal with really small items that cut out, the pieces drop through and sometimes the laser can end up cutting over it one more time and ruining it. So uh, we'd recommend, if you haven't seen the tip video, we definitely recommend that you use a honeycomb on the bottom. Another recommendation that we have is if you can uh, definitely use an air assist. Um, we've shown on a, a previous video as well on the tip video that shows the difference between cutting with and without an air assist. If it's too expensive, we also show that you can use masking tape, but you definitely don't want to just cut it as is uh, because it's going to leave some burn marks and, and the uh, final product, even after you sand it, especially if you're dealing with uh, plywood, because if you sand it too much, you end up going to the next layer um, and things can really start looking bad. So using the air assist might be a little more expensive, uh, but it is something that if you're going to be using your laser a lot, it is something you're going to need to use. Do not use this for engraving. We've looked into this and, and tested it ourselves. And for some reason, when you use it for engraving, the engraving just doesn't come out as, as nice. So only when you're cutting. So we're going to go ahead and start cutting on this. Because we do the work in a garage and a confined area, we actually purchased an air purifier, which we'll be turning on. We have both the purifier and the air assist connected to a surge protector over here. Now that they're on, we are ready to go. Okay, so we finished cutting out the shield, uh, the main design of it, and I'm gonna show you some of the features that we have on here and explain why we did this. You don't have to do it the same way, but it's crucial for us because we're going to be using a lot of epoxy with this. So when making the shield, you really don't need to have these rings. Um, as it is, you could uh, paint uh, or you could you could stain different colors here and uh, just finish it up as is uh, I would still glue this onto a, a, a backing so that it, it holds uh, everything together otherwise trying to, to keep these pieces together is going to be kind of difficult because they are all separate rings now why did we actually make these rings well the reason is um, as I mentioned we're going to be using a uh, epoxy all right, so let me explain this a little bit better. Okay, so this is a ring that we're gonna cut out. This is actually 10 and a half inches, which is the largest I can get out of our X-Tool M1. Now, this is going to be mounted on uh, a base piece of wood like this. The reason for this is I could cut the base out and make it uh, exactly 10 and a half inch and then just um, put that whole shield that we cut out on top of this. But what this is, is actually it's going to serve as kind of a, 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 she a barrier, I'm sorry, a barrier so that when you pour the epoxy, it doesn't come out. It holds all the epoxy inside. If you just, uh, if you don't have this and you pour it on here, yes, it'll get a nice clean, smooth surface and it'll, it could look good. But the, our idea with this on, on the shields that we have been making is we want a little more dimensional, three dimensional, uh, so that it represents kind of the curve uh, that you would normally have on the metal metal, uh, metal shield. Uh, we might have been able to do that if we had a little more skills with wood, but uh, instead of doing it that way, we're just going to do several different layers, and it depends on how many layers you want to do, but this here is very specifically just to hold the epoxy inside. Now, what kind of problem that causes is, um, unfortunately, when you have all these separate rings that you have cut out, so this here is going to be filled with epoxy. So this is something that was actually not going to be there. Okay, so it will look something like this, and then we're gonna fill the epoxy in all the way around here. Then we're gonna put another layer above this so that it becomes, like I said, more of a three-dimensional thing. The problem, and not really a problem, but, but the thing about this is 
this piece of wood that we've already cut out, what's left over is a circle that fits inside. We now need a piece that is exactly the same width and is the, or the diameter as this one here, so it sits on top of it and raises it up higher. If we take the circle that's the next level that was cut, it just fits inside it, and that doesn't do us any good. So we need, some, we need a ring, so we're going to be cutting another circle that's going to be the same as this so that it'll be a little bit higher up. Now, we could do that for every one of the different color stripes so that it, it becomes uh, uh, higher and higher and higher until it gets in the middle. I think that might be a little bit too much, so I'm trying to take a look here what would be best, but I'm thinking maybe two, three levels uh, at tops on this one here. So we just got to figure out which circles we need to make to, to raise this up, and we'll go ahead and cut those out. We do cut those out, and that means that we end up using a whole sheet just for a tiny, a smaller circle. But um, what I recommend doing is you keep those the inserts that are, that are cut out, and let me show you what I'm talking about. On previous projects that we've cut out for shields, we have all these circles that remain. So, for example, this was a ring, and this was in order to cut that ring, we had to have a piece of wood, we cut it. Now this is not needed, because all we need is this ring. So instead of wasting this, I keep these. So I'd recommend that you keep this, and what I can do now, fortunately, is that um, some of the inner rings of this Captain America shield, this may be able to fit on there, and if it's not, I can use this to cut out the exact size, but at least I'm not wasting this entire piece of wood. So uh, don't throw away any of the, the scrap woods, because you can certainly use those on future projects as well. Here's just a sample of spare spare circles, rounds, um, but fortunately on this particular one, I know I'm gonna be able to use a few of these for this particular shield. All right, so here's what it looks like when we have the base and a couple of rings here, and it's gonna be held in here. Now, um, in essence, we're gonna be filling this with epoxy, so this happens to be the ring that would sit in between those, and it's gonna be scrap unless I can make another ring of this for some other project, but do not throw this away, and I'm gonna show you why. Okay, now we have the ring and the base, we're actually going to be gluing this on here. Um, we are actually gonna be using epoxy glue. Um, the reason for that is oftentimes we will stain these different pieces in different colors, and if normally you would uh, stain this after everything's all put together, um, but when you do that and you're dealing with different color of stains, it will oftentimes bleed into the other. If you sand it, you'll mess it all up. So unfortunately, we always have to stain things first, and, uh, and, and that can, and as I says, cause problems. So the biggest problem that it causes, if you then stain, if you stain this and then you put uh, wood glue on here to attach it, the squeeze out can dry and as you guys know, the wood glue color um, will really show up and you can't sand it down without ruining the stain on the bottom. So what we have found the best solution for us is to use epoxy glue. We'll put epoxy glue on here, stick it to this and any squeeze out that you have is not a problem because it's epoxy and we're gonna be pouring epoxy over it and when you do anything that sticks out now will be totally blended in with the epoxy that we pour so that's the perfect solution for us now um, you could when doing this you could attach this and it could be a pretty good job if you center it by eyeball but as we mentioned before this is the the waist ring that we're not going to be using that fits in here now we want to use that so that we know where to set up this middle ring and we can glue it in there exactly where it's supposed to be. It'll be evenly, perfectly centered. The problem here is that, as we mentioned, that you might get squeeze out. If you get squeeze out from the glue, what could happen here is it could glue this outer portion um, and you won't be able to get it out and now you're stuck and may have to make a new one. Okay, so what we do instead is a little trick that we work with and that is using toothpicks. Why toothpicks? Well, let me show you. All we're gonna do here is lay some around. And then, hello, okay. Then when we use this, and we place this here, it won't sit all the way down inside. So it's, it's not touching the wood below. And then when we apply glue to this, and drop it in, 
it can drop in in the right place we take this off and that stays exactly where it's supposed to so a few toothpicks can really make a difference and make your life easier all right while the M1 is cutting a few more of our uh, inner rings uh, we're going to explain something a little bit different here um, you can actually use uh, stains on this as we had mentioned and we're going to explain what that does this is one of the things that we make uh, it's a flag we do u.s flags as well um, and if you take a close look you have what appears to be three different colors um, in reality this is from the exact same piece of plywood uh, the same uh, mahogany sheets that we're using for this particular um, uh, captain america shield now it looks so different simply because we are using different stains we use a dark stain that makes it uh, represent the uh, red of the flag we use a little bit lighter stain than that uh, to represent the blue and we use no stain at all and uh, allow it to use uh, the the wood color itself which is kind of lighter so it will represent the white so you'll be able to do something like this as well for if you were to make uh, let's say the captain america shield which has red white and blue um, but Today we're going to do something a little bit different. I just wanted to show you and, uh, and, and explain this is the main reason why we have to use epoxy glue instead of uh, wood glue. Um, if you were to um, glue everything together and let it sit, press it on there, and then try and stain it after the fact, you are going to get the dark stain into the lighter stains no matter what. It's just going to happen. So the only way to avoid that is you cut these in pieces, you stain the pieces that you know that are going to be dark and, and the ones that are going to be medium stain, let those dry, then you assemble it, but then you do the glue and you're going to have squeeze out and that's where the biggest concern are, but use epoxy glue and then when we cover it with epoxy, you're not going to notice this at all. Now let's get back to the shield. Okay, so we have various levels cut out and each one has a ring around it just so that it can hold the different types of epoxies. Now if you notice, um, this bottom one looks a little bit different. This is all mahogany um, plywood and, and you will obviously, by sheet by sheet, you're going to get different colors that are not perfectly the same each time and that's okay. In this particular case, it kind of looks good. You already have contrast here. As I mentioned, we are not going to be doing any kind of stain on this and we'll go through this and explain what we're going to do here and you've probably already seen the end result with the thumbnail itself. But all right, so now we got all this together. Um, we're also going to be adding a little special feature here. Um, this is to represent not only the uh, star that's normally in the shield, but this is a an Air Force emblem for the, uh, the rank that our friend uh, made it to and so we want to put that in there. We're also going to be adding a name. Now normally um, we have a, a, a way of doing that but um, unfortunately it doesn't look too good the way that we normally do this so we're going to be cutting out the letters individually and gluing them one by one to make sure we get a nice curve uh, so that the letters fit in there pretty and so we're going to go ahead and show you how we do that as well. All right, so as we mentioned before, we use uh, epoxy glue to, to glue the wood pieces together. And here's what we use. We use from uh, Gorilla Glue. It's epoxy. Uh, and there were some other ones we've tried. And for whatever reason, this one just works the best for us. Uh, the way this works is uh, just like the actual epoxy that we're going to uh, pour later. It comes in two different parts. You mix them together and then apply it and it dries. This stuff here dries within five minutes. So you do have to work uh, kind of quickly on this. What I uh, tend to do is instead of making a big batch of it all at once and then trying to glue all the pieces I just do a little bit at a time because it's going to dry hard uh, before you can finish everything and then I make another set of glue mix that and then another one another one until everything's done now let's show you how we're actually do this okay so uh, just have to squeeze these out and equal part blobs come on okay And then it's a matter of stirring for 20 seconds. Okay, I apply using a toothpick and I do so simply by touching it and pulling the glue. If you want, you can spread it. Now I'm not worried about getting this 
entirely covered with glue and the reason is I'm going to be pouring epoxy over this uh, anyways and that's going to be securing this even tighter to the base and so this is more just to kind of keep it in place and when we do the actual pour of epoxy all over it's going to be more than enough to, to hold this whole thing together. Okay, make sure you have your grain going in the same direction as this. And now, what I'm going to do is apply some weight and this is just to make sure it applies enough pressure and the glue holds. Okay, we've had a chance uh, for the epoxy to dry. It's only been about eight hours or so. Normally I'd like to do 24 hours. Uh, the reason I like to let it cure more is because when you, you the next step, what we're gonna be doing is sanding this down. When you sand it down and it's uh, cured or dried a lot more, it becomes more of a powder and uh, it falls off when you're sanding. Uh, when it's only about six or eight hours, um, it is dry, it's, it won't stick to your fingers or anything. However, it kinda, the sawdust uh, or the, the dust that that's made from sanding kind of is uh, still sticky and so it takes just a little more effort to clean it off it's not a big deal it still comes off uh, well enough so we're going to go ahead and start sanding the reason that you use some sanding here is it's going to scuff the surface and allow another layer of epoxy um, uh, to be placed on this one here now we're going to be doing something a little bit different from uh, our other projects uh, normally we use stain and allow the uh, stain colors to represent the colors of uh, the in this particular case the shield that we're, we would be making um, this time what we're going to do is we're actually going to add color to the epoxy itself and then we're going to uh, pour that in here all we're going to do is it's not going to be a layer that's that's just going to overflow uh, why obviously because if i put red in here and it overflows it's going to go into the area that should be silver or white uh, according to the the shield captain america shield so it's just going to be a layer that's um, thick enough so that you can see the color when that dries then what we're going to do is we're going to pour one more layer and that will be a real full coat of epoxy clear epoxy and it'll cover everything out hopefully this might even become kind of rounded out like a real shield um, which hopefully look, looks really nice um, when that happens though it doesn't matter if it uh, overflows between the next because it's all going to be clear so again first step first uh, we need to sand this down scuff it up so that uh, the next layer will work and let's get right on to that too. All right, now we're ready to uh, mix up the uh, epoxy. I've poured them and uh, now we're going to be using a mica powder, which is a coloring that's going to be added to the epoxy. Um, hopefully we get a nice pretty red for the shield.
We're going to hand off the epoxy to the root professional and I'll stir. Now we're going to go ahead and pour a thin layer. All right, it's been about seven, eight hours. Um, the, it is, the epoxy has dried quite well. Uh, it turned out really nice. I've got zero bubbles on it, so things are looking good. Um, for those of you uh, that are very attentive, you probably noticed in the background there might have been a, uh, a scene or two of a different project that's sticking in here. Uh, in reality, these two are kind of going hand in hand. Uh, we ran into a, um, let's say an epic fail, uh, not, not from our fault, um, but uh, we, created a shield and sword uh, and we uh, mailed it out. We identified it as very fragile. Unfortunately, I found out when it arrived on the other end that the sword had snapped. And uh, although I was told they have glue, they'd fix it and it's not a problem, they like it. Uh, that's just not right. You know, if they paid for a, a, a nice product, so I want to redo this. So it's been kind of a scramble. Um, we're doing, working on it really hard. Uh, we're kind of squeezing the, tight, uh, the time down as fast as possible without skipping any steps it's just a matter of we have to keep a clock all the time keep watch on it clean bubbles and whatnot as opposed to just letting it dry and fixing it afterwards and then letting it pour and, and so forth anyhow so we've been doing two of these projects at the same time so what we're going to do now is both of these projects are ready for the final port well final pour. Uh, we're going to pour this uh, and over the top so that it all pours over and uh, we should get nice uh, dome, hopefully a good dome type effect but it'll cover and uh, the uh, color epoxy that we poured earlier will maybe be uh, still visible uh, because this is a clear level that we're going to pour on top so now we're going to go ahead and show you how, we, how this looks. Alright we are now ready to pour. It's turning out really nice. Okay, now we cover things up, make sure no flies or dust or anything get in there. Keep in mind, even a speck of dust will cause a pit in the uh, epoxy and it will ruin the surface. So you have to keep it a completely sterile uh, environment. We found this little cheat that we discovered on our own and figured why not cover it with the, uh, a little container just flipped upside down and it's simple, quick and works perfect every single time. All right, uh, the shield came out quite well, but now we have to finish it. And what do we need to finish? On the back, we get uh, epoxy drip that solidifies and we need to take care of these. Now, there's a couple of things that I've tried over the time uh, to, to see if we can avoid this. In the past, I used to tape along, along the bottom and allow it to drip and then you just peel off the tape. Uh, unfortunately, some of the times it peels off the edge as well. And more often than not, the tape got embedded too deeply into the wood. You you spend so much time um, actually peeling it until you can get everything off. So that didn't really work for me. The other option is I've seen people who just use a planer and they take this off little by little by little. I never have good luck with the planers so I skip that. And uh, one more option is to sand this. It takes a lot of sanding to get rid of some of these bumps, these drips, so I skipped on that one as well. What I have decided and learned to use is a heat gun and a chisel. Also, important to use a little bit of um, wax paper, I guess that's what you call it. And um, the reason for this is simple. You're gonna be turning the thing upside down and you don't wanna lay that on a surface that might scratch it. So this is just to keep uh, the epoxy, protect the epoxy when it's upside down and you're, you're using the heat gun to take it off. So let's go ahead and take a look how we do this. Not only am I softening up the epoxy, 
but I kind of heat the chisel itself, which helps it um, kind of go through this really easily. And after just a short while, the chisel takes off the epoxy like butter. Now that you've seen the video, here is our final product. Okay, it turned out really well. Uh, as we had mentioned before, there was in the background, I had some other project going on. Uh, the truth is that um, we had mailed this one product and, and it actually snapped uh, due to the post office. Uh, I'm sure it was human error, mistake, unintentional, but mistake. Anyhow, so Accident. what we did was we rushed and we remade this. This is what uh, our friend originally ordered and uh, we had shipped to it, but the handle broke off. So now what we did, we didn't make a video on this, by the way, but we've, what we've done this time is I made the, the handle triple strength uh, with three plies of wood there. So it shouldn't snap this time. It should be really solid. We'll get this out. We'll actually send it out with the other shield that we made to our friend as a gift. So we hope you enjoyed this. I uh, hope you helps you to understand how we work with epoxy. Uh, yes, we could get a lot of these product uh, projects done much quicker simply by gluing and then maybe spraying on a poly of some sort and then uh, give it a nice shine and it's good to go. But we really like the look of the epoxy. The epoxy fills everything up inside here, gives it a glass look. As you can see, it reflects everything, uh, but it looks really nice. And so we think this is worth the extra effort. Um, next week? Next week video, we have many projects that we're still working on. We don't know which one we're gonna do yet, but until then, bye-bye. Bye.